Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be showing you how to change the oil in a C7 Corvette with the dry sump system. Uh, this system is the same on the, the C7 Z51, the Z06 also, um, and the Grand Sports that have the dry sump system, um, which I believe most of them, if not all of them, do have it. So um, it's a little bit more tricky. It actually uses a little more oil. Um, it's usually like five or six quarts in a uh, in a regular uh, in the regular Stingray. But if you have the dry sump system, then you're looking at 9.7 quarts of oil plus a uh, plus a filter to do an oil change. Um, so throughout this video, I'm going to be giving you some, we're going to be showing you this stuff. I'm going to be talking to you about some of the, the pitfalls of. Um, what it takes to do this. It's not hard, it's just uh, just knowing how to do it. That's, that's itself. Being able to do it yourself will save you a lot of money rather than take it to the shop. So here we go, we're gonna jump into the video now. Here we're under the car and Terry's about ready to go ahead and take the two oil plugs loose here. We've actually got one, one of them actually drains the dry sump system and the other one drains the pan itself. Most of the oil is actually held in the dry sump tank up above under the hood. And so the tank, it's the, the pan underneath doesn't hold a heck of a lot, um, but we have to be able to drain both of them out. Once we drain the oil, then we're gonna take the oil filter off and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you do this that you do it with the engine warm. It doesn't have to be blazing hot, but you don't want it to be cold sitting in the garage because it's, uh, the oil's just not gonna drain out of it completely and it's uh, just not gonna flow well. So be sure and start the engine, let it run for a little while and get warm. So with that said, he's gonna go ahead and start draining away here. That would probably be most of the oil. Yeah. So like I said, the majority of the oil is actually held in the dry sump system, which is that's why you've seen just piles of oil coming out of this thing. Uh, the system holds 9.7 quarts uh, with a uh, when it, when you do a filter change on it also, and um, that brings us to another thing that I wanted to talk to you about was that. Uh, when you go to do an oil change on your own, you know darn well what oil you're getting in it. You know, my, this thing came from the manufacturer with Mobile One, and um, I have found out that when you go to the dealer, it doesn't always mean that you're going to get Mobile One when you tell them that you want this thing serviced. Um, I found out that uh, their standard everyday price that they quote you for oil change um, is not. Uh, mobile one it's actually um, their uh, the approved alternative which is a little bit cheaper and um, I'll be able to show you that in the um, on the bottles when we go to put it in but uh, this way you're you I know with the dealer you always have to pay more to be able to get mobile one installed um, also they um, they don't put a mobile one filter on it either uh, either so um, so anyway, that's one of the things that one of the nice things about knowing doing it yourself that you know darn well what you're getting. Um, so as you can see, this oil slowly slowing down, and uh, we're going to be able to uh, 
We'll let that one drain. He'll be able to start the drain on the other plug here in a second. And then we'll, uh, after that's done, we'll come back to you. Okay, so now Terry's gonna go ahead and he's gonna pull the oil, the oil plug on the, on the second one, which is just the pan plug, which we shouldn't get very much uh, fluid out of that one. But, um, majority of it was already up in the dry sump. So as you can see guys, you can see right there that there was not a whole heck of a lot. We're just gonna let, let it drain here for a minute. Um, and then after it pretty much comes to a real slow, slow drip, then we'll go ahead and we'll pull the filter off. Um, and then at that point, we're pretty much done here. After we put a new filter on, we'll be done down here. And uh, then we'll move back up to the top and, and refill it. So now while the final bits of oil are draining out of the pan, um, now's a perfect time to be able to take a look underneath the car and see if, inspect it for any leaks or anything that you've maybe hit that they, it's, you know, there, there might be damage that you can't see it when it's on the ground. So now's a really good time to just make sure, just take a look. You've got a few minutes, take a look and see if there's anything that you need to address. Um, keep an eye on things like that, seeing a little small leak now and making sure that it gets fixed now is going to save you lots of money down the road. So you just want to, like I said, just give it a few minutes, take, take a look, see if there's anything that uh, needs addressing. And if not, great. And if so, at least you know, know about it and you can get it taken care of. When you put these plugs back in, just make sure that the surfaces are nice and clean so that they'll seal properly. Okay. And he's just wiped, he just wiped off the little hole just to make sure that, you know, you're getting all the, you don't have any drips. Yeah. So he's got the plugs back in and he's going to tighten them down. And you don't have to reef these things down. Uh, you know, I don't know why people think that you got to reef the heck out of them. Just snug them up. Um, you know, otherwise you could be stripping some stuff out. You know, you don't want to do that. So now that he's got... Now that he's got the, uh, the thing snugged up there, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the, the filter itself. Yeah, Scott went and got a, an actually a really cool filter remover. I use the ones with the bands and sometimes you just can't get them in there right. And I have two different sizes of those and guys that's another thing that you're going to probably see is that um, Best thing to do, they make two different sizes of those of these filters, and they variate between brand. And so um, there's two different ones that I have, and it never fails every time. You know, if you use the exact same filter every time, it's great. You only need the one, but it never fails. You're going to have the wrong one if you don't buy them. They're not that expensive, so I'd recommend that you get both of them. It makes it so you can put it on the end of the ratchet like that. It makes it really easy to take off. It makes it super easy to put back on. And these cars really don't have any room to be able to use the old style uh, filter wrench. So by having this, uh, you know, these a, a little um, big socket. Yeah, it's basically a big socket for the filters there, and um, it just makes it so much easier to uh, to take the filter on and off. So now he's just letting that the preliminary oil come out of the filter so he doesn't make a big old mess and then he's going to completely fill, drop it down and then uh, we'll get that out of the way and then we'll get a new filter in here in a minute after it drains out. So guys, we, we were talking about tightening these bolts up. I've done this for years. Uh, we've all done these things for years and we just snug them up like, we've, like we showed you. But um, those of you that want to make Darn sure you have the exact spec. These are actually 15 millimeter bolts here, and they are they're set should be set to 18 foot pounds of torque. So just so you so you know. Now after we get to the point here where the oil is pretty much drained out of the filter, you want to make sure that you wipe all of this down. So like I was saying, um, we were talking about the oil filter wrenches. Now this one right here, um, I've had this one for years. It's a metal wrench. 
Uh, the other one that actually happened to fit this one that fits on the socket, it's, it was a plastic one, but you could pick these up at AutoZone, O'Reilly's, pretty much any place that sells oil filters. But this makes your life so much easier because you're actually going straight up and down here, not trying to use the traditional wrench like we were talking about. Out the new filter, getting ready to put it in there. You want to put a little oil around the ring just to make sure it gets a nice seal. I just like stick it, just stick your finger in, in there and just on your finger is all you need. And just put a little bit on here. Just put it on the gasket. Just kind of makes it seal nicer. Some people do it, some people don't. I like to. Like I was telling the people, they, uh, if you don't, you take the chance of, the, of ruining the gasket. So. Just make sure all of this up here is dry before you put it on there and clean of all debris. And it's real easy. You just kind of stick it up there and get it started and away she goes. Okay. There you go. Okay guys. I just want to point something out here. We're going to actually use the uh, the Mobile One high mileage uh, today on on the Corvette. Uh, my car actually has um, right around 90,000 miles on it, so we're actually going to use uh, the high mileage. Now I had every intention of using the uh, the annual uh, protection, and um, I went to one of the auto zones near my near my house here in Sacramento and uh, there was only one quart there. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll go to another auto zone. I tried another auto zone in Sacramento and they didn't have any. Um, so I was actually driving up here to Browns Valley, which is right near Yuba City in Marysville. And I stopped in two more auto zones, an O'Reilly and a Napa, uh, uh, a Reby's, um, which is a, a Napa parts store. And none of them had this. And then they all knew about it, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't have it. They don't stock it, and they don't. They don't have it anywhere for it on their shelves. So this made me think. Well, okay, maybe I shouldn't be putting this type of oil in if I can't find it anywhere. So I decided to go ahead and go back to using the uh, the high mileage stuff. Now, if mobile, if you're actually listening, uh, happen to hear this or see this video you might want to start promoting your oil a little bit more and having your your uh, your vendors and the stores actually um, have it in the store it's kind of hard for you to sell it if you guys don't have it so um, there'd be a, probably a lot more people like myself that would be happy to use it just for the simple fact that if you don't have to change the oil you could get an extra oil change out of it and only spend an extra ten dollars for this this one big jug over over the 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 other traditional mobile one oil that's money savings not to mention when you've got these cars that are so low and it's extremely hard to get jacked up uh you know it would be so much easier to be able to have double the life and um and so you're only having to do this once a year instead of you know twice or three times if you happen to drive the car a lot so uh, hopefully somebody from mobile sees this and that will maybe uh, spark something for you guys to start getting these guys to start stocking it. So anyway, uh, that's about it for now. So now what Terry's going to go ahead and do is he's going to go ahead and put these, put these two into the, into the car. So right over here is where the, uh, the dry sump system is right here where, where uh, Terry's got the, fill, the funnel. And so this is the this is the cap here, um, and you can see there. It's I think it's called uh, Dexus. Um, that's the that's the uh, rating or the certification or whatever it may be that General Motors has said. Hey, if if the oil meets this requirement, then you can go ahead and you can use that oil, and it doesn't so it doesn't necessarily have to be mobile one but and so if you just go into the dealer and you say hey give me an oil change on my Corvette that is what you're gonna get you're gonna get that brand which is their house brand and it's not gonna be mobile one so you want to make sure that you tell them that you want mobile one they're gonna charge you accordingly they're gonna charge you more money but it's actually you know you'll actually get mobile one 
Um, so again, the beauty of doing it yourself, you actually know that that's what you're getting. Mobile one. Is that camera on? Yep. Well, yep got, they're both on. And I got, I got you looking at mobile one now. Now I'm just going to pour it in here without getting it all over the car. Right. So with this thing holding 9.7 quarts, um, these are five, five quart jugs here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill just, you know, completely fill the, the car full with of this one and then we'll almost use the second one. And then once we've got we've got about nine quarts in it, then we'll uh, we'll start the car and we'll bring the temperature up to 170 degrees. And then at that point we can shut the car off and then we can go ahead and uh, check the uh, check the levels to, to tap it off. Um, you don't want to. Um, you don't ever want to check the oil on this with the engine w uh, cold because it'll show that the uh, that the engine oil level is totally low. And I've heard some stories about um, people actually going, "Oh yeah, my my uh, my level's low." They go and they grab a couple quarts, they fill it up, and then they start the engine, and it starts spitting oil all over the place. So you don't want to do that. So. So how much do you think you put in there, Terry? There's about nine. About nine quarts. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, we're gonna start the car here in a second, and um, we'll let it come up to temperature, and then we'll add the additional. So when you start the car, you're gonna want to move this over, set the the gauges over to your performance settings, and bring up your oil temperature, and that way you'll be able to stand outside the car and you'll be able to see the gauges. Okay, so we're up to about 170 degrees now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to shut the car off and we're going to wait about five minutes, but no more than 20, to be able to check the, the engine oil level. And we're going to go ahead and top everything off. And once we do that, we're, we're done. So we've let the car come up to temperature and we waited our five, six minutes and now we're checking the, t the, uh, the oil level now. And where do we sit? We're about maybe a quart. No. Okay. All right. Now your life will be a lot easier with the filling this up if you get a filter that acts or a, a, a filler um, a funnel that actually has a wider mouth on it um, instead of the smaller one because you're pouring a lot of fluid in there anyhow a lot of oil into that hole but if you get one with the right size um, it'll stay in the hole and it's not going to fall out um, it just makes it so much easier. I'd say a little tad more and you're good. Okay. That should be it right there. kind of recap here we actually before we started we put about eight quarts in it we were shooting for you know we probably put eight and a half or so in it so eight and a half nine quarts and then you want to let it run up to temperature yeah, you're good and then you want to wait you shut the engine off you want to wait five minutes and then go ahead and test it so he added had to add about a quart a little over a quart which brought us right up to full 
So we are probably pretty close to what GM says. It takes about 9.7 quarts to, uh, to fill it. So um, looks like... Uh, I've just cleaned some of the oil that might have dripped down here. Yeah. Because then it makes everything a mess. I don't think you dropped any, but... Well, I was just making sure because sometimes there's a little lip down here that sometimes you get oil in. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, there you have it. We've got it completed. Thanks for watching it. Hi, I'm Lily and you're watching the Corvette channel.